Well, we've got to mention this one with our Baltimore crew in here today between the Nationals and the Orioles. And, of course, it has serious implications still for the Baltimore Orioles. We know currently the Orioles uh, hanging on right now. Feels pretty good. Two and a half games with a week to play. It's kind of the same as that other little wild card. It, it feels like Tampa Bay is right on your heels, but, uh, you know, if that, that's actually pretty good, especially with Tampa. Uh, you know, lost their last game, and Baltimore's won a couple in a row, and now, you know, you've got, um, you know, as good as Washington has been to us, Baltimore can think that they've got, oh, the Nationals coming in. So it does give the Nationals maybe a little bit of motivation to play a little bit of spoiler here, but I think it's going to be hard. you got Bradish uh, looking good. This is what you'll aim. Hey, Bradish can give with this kind of contribution – 2.43 ERA in his last six starts, and the Orioles have won seven of Bradish's last nine starts. Orioles have also won six of their last nine. Josiah Gray's been nice of late, 3.52 ERA in his last three starts, but Baltimore's been the opposite of uh, Bradish with Gray pitching. They're three and six in their last nine games. The Nationals have lost 10 of their last 14 games. So I've Really feel like we could go either way here in this one, but uh, probably going to lay the Orioles here. I'll lay a run line today late in the season. This might be a little bit more where I'm interested in uh, getting involved uh, with a run line here. And I will lay this one with Baltimore today. And I know our crew, they'll have an honest opinion of this game, I would think. And uh, let's see. Oh, there's some other plays there on the red. Thanks, guys. Gray says we need this. What do we do, though? Do we root for the Nats when the O's, you know, like, in, you know, when they won the World Series, for example, or, uh, you know, in other games, or we do we despise them? Darren going over. Um, feeling, I'm not, no, I don't know if I'm with Darren necessarily in the, the reported steam did come in on the under let me see what that i want to make sure i get you any line changes too i'm sorry if i missed any in that first game blake will agree with me here mike talking about the yankee we'll talk about the yankee game but was funny right everybody talking about the crowd yesterday uh, Forty-one thousand fans for the last game of the season it was probably more like 9500 but that's what they announced. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, to bummer. Jamal's on the Orioles on the money line here. I'm sure 235 money line, uh, run line is a pick em, it looks like here. And I might have the total uh, a little bit too high. So maybe I should have given a uh, – I know Jamal was saying over. Let me give Jamal a better line because I think we – it's. Uh, a lot of seven and a halfs out there right now. I'm showing seven and a half over 15 at one particular offshore book. I did show the Reds game earlier at eight, and it's gone down to uh, seven and a half. So I just want to make that clear. I did take the under in that other game, and I just uh, had not started updating. I'm a little still out of sync with my first full week of uh, solo shows, so. Hopefully you'll tolerate that. Hopefully you stick around with me. I know the shows are long, but I want to talk about every game and other things. So, right, Mike? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Hello to Ray. Yeah, seven and a half. We're dealing with seven and a halfs in both those games, quite frankly. And, uh, you know, uh, some of the games will be a little bit more. Uh, yeah, what did Mike, what did your, uh, what did your, uh, algorithm say about, <laughs> about this, about the uh, attendance? All right. Uh, I'm going to take the under here. I'm sorry. I'm going to take the Orioles here on the run line today against the Nats. <laughs> 